What we really want to do is raise our level of awareness so the expectation becomes a natural state for our mind to be in. And we've already mentioned that expectation is a mindset. It's a mental state. And you're going to find that that state comes to you with an increase of awareness. Now, in talking about the law of vibration, we're starting off here saying the law of vibration explains the difference between mind and matter, between the physical state and the non-physical state of everything in the universe, which includes you. So we're talking about the non-physical, and here we're talking about the physical. Now, this non-physical part of our personality is where the mental magic starts to take place. We call these our creative tools. They're mentioned in an earlier lesson under the heading of intellectual factors. And it's the intellectual factors that we want to develop. And in developing them, what we do is raise our level of consciousness. Now you come back here, we say, under the law of vibration, we find that everything vibrates, nothing rests. Everything is in a constant state of motion. There is no such thing as inertia. From the mental to the grossest form of matter, all is in vibration. This lectern is made of, I suppose we would call it lucite. However, it appears to be solid, but it's really not. If you look under a microscope, you'll see particles of energy moving. And of course, that would be the same with every physical form that you might look at under a microscope. Now, we say graduating between the lowest and the highest form of vibration, there are literally millions of cells or levels of vibration. Rates of vibration are known as, known as frequency. The higher the frequency, the more potent it becomes. Thought being one of the highest forms of vibration and very potent in nature should certainly be understood. Now, I have mentioned in many, many seminars that thought waves are cosmic waves that penetrate all time and all space. It's not an accident if you happen to be wandering down the Champs-Élysées in Paris or maybe Oxford Street in London, England, and a loved one may be sitting in Colorado Springs and they're really concentrating. Something has happened at home and they really want you to phone home. All of a sudden, you get a feeling you should phone home. Now, what did we say feeling was? Vibration. Their thought waves are in resonance or in harmonious vibration on the same frequency as certain cells in your brain. And as that thought wave of theirs strikes your brain cells, it sets up a vibration in you. You call that a feeling. You've got a feeling you should phone home. And you phone and they'll say, oh, thank goodness you phone. We've been wanting to talk to you. Do you think that's an accident? Again, it's the same thing when uh, you pick up the phone to phone someone. You haven't touched the dial. Uh, the phone hasn't rang, and yet the other person's on the other end. We put that off as coincidence, and we laugh about it. It's an absolute law. You are in tune with the other person. Now, we started out yesterday morning with a glass of water. In the earliest lesson, we were coming under and talking about these three parts of our personality, and then we related it to energy. I held up a glass of water. And I said, in the state of vibration it was in, the energy was called water. Then we talked about heating the water. We called the same energy steam. It wasn't water any longer. And then we continued to heat the energy, and then we called it air, ether, or gas. It was the same energy. We are aware of our objective as well as our subjective world. Now, there are many varying degrees of consciousness until you reach the higher state, which is called divine or cosmic. Use whatever word you choose. It's divine or cosmic consciousness. All religions that have maintained their balance over any period of time are founded on the premise that we will one day be one with our maker. We will reach this higher or divine conscious state. We will be aware of our oneness with this power. Now you're going to find individuals who have a very low level of consciousness. They're way down here. 
Therefore, they have a very low level of what we call awareness. Now, the awareness dictates how that person lives. When I, ever I mention this, I think of the first time I uh, had an occasion to go down to the Loop or downtown Chicago. I was living in Glenview, and I went down the Eden's Expressway, and as I was going along Michigan Avenue, I saw people laying right in the gutter. They were absolutely filthy. Now, these people were virtually living in an animalistic state, almost. And you would say, well, they're stupid. No, they're not stupid. Some of these people have degrees. Some may have a doctorate's degree or an MBA. What they have is a low level of consciousness. They could have a highly developed intellect. Know a lot here, but still in a low vibration. They're not living there because they want to. They're living there because they do not know. They are not aware of how to change it. You will find then individuals, some are up in years, some are fairly young, that have a very high level of consciousness. They're not away down here with their consciousness. They have a very high level of consciousness and they have a very, very high level of awareness. Now these people have a phenomenal vibration. Their energy, you feel so good around them. There's something about them that you're attracted to. You're not quite sure what it is. You see, you couldn't articulate on it because it's vibration. You very rarely see these people upset. You very rarely see them excited or depressed. They have learned how to maintain a magnificent balance. Everything they do, they seem to do very, very well. They're very creative. They know how to get results. They know how to stay on track and not let the suggestions that are coming from their outside world knock them off track. Now, what you and I are really seeking is a higher level of awareness. And you know, that's what we're gaining as we're studying this material. The more often you watch this, the more you're raising your level of consciousness. Now, what you're really doing is raising your level of awareness. And we're going to get to the point where we're very, very tuned in. We say the law of vibration could be explained in many ways for various purposes. In this seminar, it is our intention to confine it to thoughts, uh, an effort to improve the quality of our life. Now, I'm just going to touch on the first couple of pages, and then John's going to come up and tie this in on this board to goals. Because that's what we really want to know. We want to know how does reaching the goal and the awareness of vibration, how do they connect? Where's the connection there? Well, the more we understand this, the more we'll understand what I'm saying here, because everything vibrates. So what we want to do is get into harmonious vibration with whatever good we desire. We say here on the bottom of page 41, third paragraph in the bottom, for you to grasp a clearer understanding of how you can actually take dominion over your results, to understand how and why thoughts and things come into your life as they do, you must go back to this basic premise which we started with in the very first lesson where I held the glass of water and talked about the energy. We called it water, we called it steam, we called it air, ether, or gas. It was the same energy, it was just altering its level of vibration. Now we say energy is neither created nor destroyed. All science and all theology have taught us that for, let's say for the past 6,000 years at least in recorded history. Now, everything is merely in a constant state of vibration being manifest in all varying degrees of vibration. We have the ability to alter the vibratory rate of anything. I could take and alter the vibratory rate of this lectern, call it lucite, I could turn it into air, ether, gas. I did that yesterday with a dollar bill. Just one minute it was paper, boom, the next minute it was air. I had the choice, I had the ability to do that because I'm a creative being. I do have dominion over. Well, now we know that with simple little things, let's use it for higher things. We say with free will and the other many, many mental factors we possess, in our marvelous mind, you have the co-creative ability to cause vibratory change to take place as you choose. If I'm not feeling good, negative vibration, I can switch the idea in my mind, all of a sudden I'm feeling good, positive vibration. How's that controlled? It's controlled by the various ideas that I will choose to entertain to, from time to time because whatever goes in here dictates the vibration my mind-body is in. And we must understand mind-body are one and the same, not two. Now, with free will, reason, 
is one intellectual factor. Will is another intellectual factor. Reason gives us freedom. And the will gives us the ability to lock into an idea and control our vibration. And stay in the vibration we must be in to attract something that's already here.